And joining me now is Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Donald Trump Hi, is now saying that he has great respect for FBI Director James Comey, but take a listen to what Mr. Trump said just a couple weeks ago. Likewise, they have essentially corrupted the director of the FBI to the point at which stories are already saying that the great, and they are truly great, men and women who work for the FBI are embarrassed and ashamed of what he's done to one of our truly great institutions, the FBI itself. So is James Comey still corrupted, Kellyanne, or is he only corrupt when he does something that Mr. Trump disagrees with? So there are two separate investigations here. First, on July 5th, Jim Comey came out and told the world, Jake, that he was declining prosecution of Hillary Clinton based on the investigation. He then proceeded to tell us every reason why he should have indicted her. She should have pressed charges, that she was reckless, she was careless. Two days later, he testifies before Congress under oath and completely guts his conclusion and completely undercuts Secretary Clinton's previous statements that there were, there was there one device? No, there were many devices. Was there classified information exchange? Yes, there was. Was there national security information? Yes, there was. He completely undercut his own conclusion in that investigation. That led to tremendous frustration and criticism by many people who thought either put the statement out that you're not going to press charges and leave it at that, or if you're going to go public, at least let your comments, the evidence, match your conclusion. This new investigation is a completely separate matter in that he was in an impossible spot, it would seem to me, 11 days before an election. Had he sat on the information, one can argue that he also would be interfering with the election by not disclosing to the public that yet again, for the second time in a year, Hillary Clinton is under FBI investigation for something of her own doing. We are only having this conversation today, Jake, because Hillary Clinton flouted the law and went and set up a private server so she can hide stuff from the public. Right. And here we are again. But Kellyanne, isn't this exactly what people, the public, the American people hate about politicians? One day somebody in law enforcement does something and they're corrupted and the next day they're a man of great integrity. You yourself tweeted uh, that there was zero accountability at the FBI. You retweeted uh, an article uh, that said when combined these moments proved that Mr. Comey gave Hillary Clinton a, a pass and you wrote your own comment, zero accountability. I mean, what are voters supposed to think about this when you and your campaign have spent the last few months besmirching the reputation of James Comey? No, we never be, I never besmirched the reputation. Zero accountability is about the process. And again, had Jim Comey simply come forward, Jake, back in July and said, we decline to press charges. The investigation is over. There will be no further charges. Had he just said that, then we would accept that result. What, what he did was he went on to explain why his conclusion was wrong. I guess he was trying to clear his own conscience. Why else be so public? I know many prosecutors, I've talked to them, who were confounded that Jim Comey set such a public standard by testifying before Congress, by having that unprecedented uh, statement to the world on July 5th, where he was leading up to a conclusion that was different than the one he then announced. But, you know, back to your well, original point, I, isn't this what people hate about politicians? Yes, it is. But the politician here is Hillary Clinton. And it's she who has put herself, her campaign, and more importantly, the nation at risk. She's unqualified and unfit to be president based on her constantly flouting the law, based on her closest advisors not complying with and swearing under oath they've turned over all these devices when clearly they have not. It's they who have imperiled our national security. So I think what James Comey would say was that he was being transparent over the summer and he's being transparent now, but I want to move on to some other topics. Uh, added a, a Trump rally in Phoenix, Arizona last night. Uh, one of Trump's supporters walked up to the press section and started chanting this. Take a listen. The crowd, was, the crowd was chanting USA. He was pointing to reporters and saying, Jew-SA. We have seen uh, a lot of anti-Semites and racists and misogynists who support the Trump candidacy. Wow. Do you, would, you call, would you call that man deplorable? Wow, yes I would. His conduct is completely unacceptable and does not reflect our campaign or our candidate. 
Wow, I have to push back on some of the adjectives you just used to describe. I hope you've been to Trump rallies, and I hope that you've seen the th tens of thousands. I mean, he's had over half a million people easily, pro no, uh, over, I think, in excess of that at his rallies. And these are uh, USA-loving Americans who just want their Absolutely. country to be prosperous and safe again. Well, you just, you just suggested that we're just filled with all these other isms, and I think that's incredibly no, fair. Hillary no, Clinton surrounds I'm, herself I, I, I don't, with I'm lots of people. I'm not saying that at all, Kellyanne. Well, I, I I'm not saying that at all. Easy one. Let me make, let me make clear what I am saying. That let me make clear what I am saying. That man's conduct was deplorable, and had I been there, I would have had, asked security to remove him immediately. Clearly, he doesn't speak for the campaign or the candidate. And, you okay. know, I think, it's, I think what he had to say was disgusting. Well, let me, let me be clear what I am saying. The vast majority of Trump supporters do not qualify as to what I'm talking about. But without question, people who's ex, who are experts on hate groups say that there has been a comfort level that has been offered to people who are anti-Semitic and racist and on and on. And these people feel comfortable coming out in the open comfort and supporting Mr. Who? Trump. Comfort level by whom? The campaign I run, Jake? Seriously? Comfort level by Not whom? you. Mr. Trump has refused to condemn in a, in a very serious way his racist and anti-Semitic fans. He just has. He, is, he says things like, oh, sure, I disavow, I disavow. But he has never seriously said, I don't want the support of those people. They are reprehensible. They have nothing to do with me. He has never seriously done it in the yes, same way has. that you that, and Mike yes, Pence has. has. Yes, he has. He has done that. And let me just repeat on his behalf that that's the way this campaign feels. And, you know, I do, I think that this exchange is frankly the best piece of evidence I have that we're actually going to win in nine days because the idea that we're going to shift away from the, the, the pattern of corruption, the cloud of ethical stain that Hillary Clinton would bring to the Oval Office, it's such an important weekend where we're again reminded why a majority of Americans already don't trust her or must, much like her. And we're going to, we're going to bring this try to be smirch the good people. I mean, I see, I was in Kinston, North Carolina with Mr. Trump on Wednesday night. It's a, it's, it's a very small town, I'm told. We had over 10, 12,000 people there. And I asked the kids in the front row, what time did you get here, honey? 1 p.m. We were there at 8 p.m. These are people who love their country, and these are people who feel like they're part of a movement, that this is not a typical politician. He's an outsider, a disruptor, somebody who owes nobody anything in Washington, which is why Washington is afraid to have him there, Jake. Please don't, please, if you do anything, don't besmirch the good hearts and the good values of the, the tens of thousands, the millions of Donald Trump supporters who frankly just love this country and believe in Kellyanne, I'm not besmirching. I'm not besmirching. Well, I've just said, I don't, I've just said the vast majority of Donald Trump fans have nothing to do with people like that. I've, I've said that. I don't know what so more I can say. And so the point of this say. conversation I, is what? The point of the, we haven't even mentioned Huma Abedin's name. This woman and her perverted husband text, sexting a 15-year-old girl in North Carolina is now again possibly about, putting this nation's security at risk. Yeah, and that, that we talked about that quite a bit with John Podesta. L let me ask you a question uh, about health care. There are real questions about whether Donald Trump understands how Obamacare works. Take a listen to what Mr. Trump had to say in Florida. Say all of my employees are having a tremendous problem with Obamacare. You folks, this is another group. Is that a correct statement? I mean, you look at what, what they've going through. What they're going through with their health care is horrible because of Obamacare. Now, after he gave that statement, the general manager of Trump's property, property attempted to correct the record, and, and he said 99% of Trump's employees are insured through the hotel, meaning they have private insurance. How can Mr. Trump be the one to replace Obamacare if he doesn't really seem to even understand how it works? He does understand. His employees are the lucky ones, Jake. They actually don't have to suffer under Obamacare, but he's actually talking about the rest of the country, so many who have. Uh, he's the right person to repeal and replace it because Obamacare is an unmitigated disaster. It reminds us all how intrusive, invasive, expensive, and expansive the federal government can become in our lives under the guise of helping people. He was in Arizona yesterday and clearly told them their premiums are expected to rise in Arizona by 116 percent. Will CNN or anybody else ask Mrs. Clinton that today when she's visiting Arizona? Uh, we see these other premium people are opening up their mailboxes and clicking onto their computers and getting notice that their premiums are about to explode. It is reprehensible and deplorable to coin a phrase that Americans are now choosing between paying the rent, feeding their families, and keeping their health care. Pre President Obama lied 26 or 27 times by telling people if you want to keep your doctor, you can keep your doctor. No, you can't. People see a lack of quality, a lack of access, 
a lack of control and an increase in price in something that's under the guise of the quote Affordable Care Act. The question for Hillary Clinton is, what would you do about it? Is Obamacare 3.0 in the offing, or would you go and try to mollify the Bernie Sanders supporters who actually want us to move to single-payer system? Either way, she should own Obamacare. She should be asked what she would do about it. Donald Trump says he would let you compete across state lines to buy your health insurance, much the way you could buy your auto insurance and other goods and services. Mm -hmm. He would he would block grant Medicaid to the states. He would immediately, through his tax plan, remove the Obamacare penalty, which is hurting many people. And he, of course, would allow a more patient-centric uh, health care system, which would give us all health savings accounts, so that you own and you can control your own health care spending. What we've got is not working, and I'm very glad that Obamacare continues to form the core of his message, even in light of the new FBI investigation. Uh, we've had a great week, in large part because, uh, because P uh, Mr. Trump is talking about Obamacare. I agree. I would love to ask Hillary Clinton that question. Uh, the Clinton campaign has not made her available to me since June, and the Trump campaign has not made Mr. Trump available to me since June. But Kellyanne Conway, I do appreciate your making yourself available to me this morning. Of Thank course. you so much. Thank you, Jake. They call it an October.